Holy cold. Here's our little village. We're on the lake. Here's the view. All right, let's see what this bad boy is all about. The fine folks at Outdoor Vitals sent me a Summit minus 15. That is the coldest rated sleeping bag they have. Minus 15 F, so that's like minus 26. And it is a true unboxing. I have so much faith in this product that I didn't even take it out of the bag at home to look at it. I know it's gonna be perfect. Look at the size of this thing. How's it ever gonna go back in the bag? <sighs> Center zip. A nice baffle around the zipper and shoulder baffles. Whew. Let it loft up, we'll be good. I'm cold right away. Like, it's important on a day like today. It's minus, it was minus 14. It's already, the sun's dropped behind these mountains. It's already minus 20. It's going to be a cold night. I'm going to sleep in that sleeping bag with uh, some puffy pants on and uh, balaclava and uh, warm socks and I should be all good. I need to inflate my pillow still, but right now already my hands are cold and taping without a uh, without a glove on is very cold. Hey guys, Marty up north here with uh, my son uh, Ray in uh, Ray's in grade 11. Um, the title of this video is called, you know, the physics behind sleeping in the cold. So you've seen that I do a lot of hiking when it's uh, minus 20, minus 25. And um, last, a couple of weeks ago, I was on a trip and had a great chat around the campfire with uh, Evan and uh, Jeff. And then I realized that uh, a quick video on uh, the thermodynamics and the physics of sleeping in the cold and how to improve your experience would be something that hopefully you guys will appreciate. So that's what we're doing today. So I got a coffee cup here that represents my body. It's a, it's a warm uh, cup, it, you know, it's about 80 degrees Celsius. Now my body's colder than that. Our bodies are about 37. Our bodies are little furnaces. We eat food and we generate heat. Now, if I put a, a, a hot object somewhere like this on a table, what's going to happen to that object over time? It's going to cool down. Okay, it's going to cool down. And when it's cooling down, what's actually happening? Do you know what's actually happening? Like energy transfer? Energy transfer, exactly. So energy is going somewhere else. So heat is a form of energy. So when this is cooling down, it's heat's going anywhere else. It's going somewhere else. How come it's not warming up? Because the air around it is colder? No, no, it's it's something else. So a body that's warm, that's that's hot will want to get colder. Will a cold body naturally want to get hotter? No. No. So that's the second law of thermodynamic, which says that things tend to get colder. The first law of thermodynamic says that energy is conserved. I, I want to re-expand on the laws of thermodynamics. So let's say there's two blocks and this block is 100 degrees Celsius, and this one is 20 degrees Celsius. So the first law of thermodynamics says that energy is conserved. So the, the energy of these two blocks will be conserved. And, and I could say that 100 Celsius is also 100 joules and 20 and, and vice versa. So there's two possibilities mathematically. Well, there's a, an infinite number of possibilities, but one possibility that is that over time, so as time goes by, over time this one could become 60 degrees Celsius and so could this one. 
So that these two blocks have the same energy as that. So energy is conserved. But if I only look at the first law of thermodynamics, another possibility is that this block will warm up and this block will cool down. And if I do that, that's also 120 and that's also 120. But we know, we know that when I leave two objects that are warm touching or at different temperatures touching each other, the outcome will be this and not that one, which is the second law of thermodynamics. And the second law of thermodynamics says that heat moves in a direction. So, uh, and that'll become a factor when I'm talking about layering the, um, your, your, uh, uh, your mattress and your th and your closed cell foam underneath. Now, just wanted to talk about that. There's three mechanisms by which this thing is getting colder. Can you think of the three ways this is getting colder? Uh, diffusion. No, don't overthink it. So where's the heat going? Into the air and the table. Into the air and the table. You're correct, actually. There, and there's a third thing that's happening. There's radiation coming off of there, but it's marginal in this case. Now, if we were sleeping on the ground and this is frozen ground, how do I slow down the amount of heat going into this table, into the ground? Insulate between you and the ground. You can insulate between me and the ground. So I could put something underneath that is resisting the heat transfer. So that's one thing. So that deals with the heat going from my body into the ground. How can I prevent heat from going uh, to the air? Cover the whole thing. Sure, I could cover the whole thing, but before I cover the whole thing, what could I do? Wrap it up. You could wrap it up, so you could put a sleeping bag. So if I have a sleeping bag and I wrap this around this, now it's going to slow down the amount of heat. Now there's heat going out through there, and the heat is, is going to the air, and how do I slow down that a little bit further? Trap the air inside of there. Trap the air inside of there, so I'm going to put my tent over that. So there you go. So that's the basis of my sleeping system. My sleeping system is a tent. Now, technically what's happening inside the tent is as the body gives off some of the heat, it's heating up the air in there. I'm preventing this giant sink of, of cold around me from sucking, it, sucking out that, that heat too quickly by putting a tent. So a tent helps. What really helps is a sleeping bag, a good bag rated for the temperatures that you're dealing with. And then underneath that bag, so my, my sleep system is a tent, a sleeping bag, and underneath something to prevent most of the heat. Because when I look at this system here, the heat capacity of the air is one thing, but the heat capacity of the ground, and we'll talk about heat capacity a little bit more, the heat capacity of the ground is really, really high, especially a frozen ground. So a lot of heat wants to go to that ground and putting something between me and the ground to prevent that heat from going down is really important. And that's where, you know, symbolically I put, I use a mattress and in the winter I use a closed cell foam. Okay, so I'm in the kitchen right now with Ray and I want to demonstrate really quickly the concept of, um, of, of heat capacity and uh, heat conductivity. So materials have uh, the ability to hold heat and they also have an ability to move heat. So a material like, uh, like wood, um, heat doesn't move through wood very quickly, but heat on the other hand will move through um, steel very quickly. And, and then the other thing is, the, so that's the conductivity. And then the other thing is the heat capacity. So if you have, for instance, uh, the amount of heat that stays in the substance. So if you have a pound of, of uh, plastic, it doesn't hold a lot of heat even if you warm it up. But if you warm up a pound of water, uh, water has a huge heat capacity. So thermal conductivity and heat capacity are important concepts uh, when trying to figure out the best way to sleep. I think you know the answer to this question because we rehearsed it before, but I'm going to ask you the question intuitively. I have four things here. I have the counter, a plastic mat, a wooden mat, and an orange. Now touch, touch the counter and touch the wooden mat. Which feels colder? Well, the table feels colder. The counter feels yeah. colder? Feels colder? Is it colder? No. Why not? Uh, because they've reached, they've been sitting here long enough to reach equilibrium. 
equilibrium and prove that to our friends. So use that thermometer and show it. So the counter is 20 degrees Celsius. Flash it on the, turn it off and turn it back on again. Actually, 18.6. But some of that is just the way that um, these digital thermometers work. It, if it doesn't reflect properly, it changes the temperature a little bit. Oh, it said 20 there. It's, it's okay, 20. So it, yeah. yeah, there's 20. And what's the plastic mat? 20. And what's the orange? 20. So everything in this room is 20 degrees, which is the temperature of the house, but things feel differently. Why do things feel differently? Mm, table is absorbing my heat faster, maybe? Exactly. So human humans can't detect temperature itself, but we can detect changes in temperature and temperature flux. So now let's do another cool experiment. I want to show uh, the concept of... Uh, heat flux or heat capacity or thermal energy transfer. So Ray's gonna grab some snow, put it in there. There you go, That's, you don't need a lot. So now sprinkle some snow evenly on these two different surfaces. Don't, yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough, leave it fairly loose. And put some uh, on the counter itself. That's fine, and put some on the counter somewhere. Yeah, right there. Now the question is, which one's going to melt first? The counter. It's already melting. <laughs> it's already melting on the counter. But the counter felt cold, cold but it's melting faster on the counter. Mm -hmm. And which one's melting slow? It? Well, the counter is already all gone. And these other things are still there so why is it gone faster on the counter because the counter is giving off its heat faster maybe no nope. the good idea the snow the counter has a higher heat transfer coefficient so it's a bad insulator so energy go it absorbs energy quickly so even though it feels colder it has a higher heat transfer coefficient and it's sucking up all the energy out of the snow and it's already melted and these other two substances are very slow. He just did it again. He put another little bit and you can see it melting quickly through the granite or marble. And on the plastic and on the wood that have uh, lower heat transfer coefficients, it's not melting as quickly. So the concept of a heat transfer coefficient, um, that's what we call, that's what we call it for a substance that's homogeneous. It's the heat transfer coefficient. But for substances that are not as homogeneous, like, um, like your thermarest or uh, wool insulation or closed cell foam, we refer to it as the R factor, the resistance factor. And so the higher the R factor, the more uh, resistant it is to okay, heat transfer. So this represents the, the ground in Canada in the winter. So usually it's frozen. The ground has a huge, it's cold, you know, it's, it's colder than freezing. So it's minus 10 degrees and it's a sink that's gonna suck heat from everything else and all the heat wants to go in this direction. So that's the law of thermodynamic. Now heat moves in three kinds of ways. Heat moves by uh, convection. So when um, two different surfaces are heated, when hot air heats uh, my hand, it's doing so by convection. And conduction is, uh, let's say I have a poker and I put it in the fire and the end starts to get hot and the heat moves up to the, uh, to the substance, the uniform substance, that's conduction. And then the third way is radiation. So the, there's, there's a heat from the flames, it's radiation. And I deal with all three when I'm uh, setting up my sleep system. So on the bottom, I put my tent on top of this. And on the bottom of my tent, I put one of these uh, mylar blankets. And that deals with radiation. There's not a lot of radiation from my body uh, going out to the ground. So it's not completely necessary, but it does give a little bit of 
Uh, it also gives a little insulation from um, from conduction. Um, these are cheap anyways, you know, they're 20 bucks on uh, Amazon and they can be used for other things. It's almost like an emergency blanket to have and it weighs nothing. Then on top of that, I put my Thermarest and Thermarests come with an R value, an insulating value. And if you look at, you know, this is about two inches thick and this has an R value of about five which is pretty good, but, and you gotta think that internally, what's gonna happen to this is, is eventually all the air around here is gonna make the air inside this reach the ambient temperature. So if it's minus 10 outside, the air in here will be minus 10. And then after that, I'm getting some resistance because of the coatings on the inside to the heat. But, the, but this, is, this is an okay insulator, but I think of the Thermarest more as as comfort than as an insulator. And then on top of my uh, Thermarest, I put my closed cell foam. Now, this the closed cell foam has an R capacity of around six to seven per inch. So just a, core, or just a half inch uh, foam like this, which weighs nothing, has a, a very good insulating properties. Now there's debate on which one should go on top and on the bottom. And to be honest, there's not a big, big difference once equilibrium is reached. So when you go to bed at say at 10 o'clock, by three in the morning, equilibrium is reached. You're, you're, the heat transfer from your body through these different layers to the ground is, is happening at a constant rate and there's an equilibrium reached. I mean, theoretically, our values just get added up, but Remember that there is a law of thermodynamics that says the heat is actually going from your body to the ground and not the other way around. So with that principle, you wanna put the layer with the highest R value closest to your body, and that will provide you with a slightly better insulation in the early part of your sleep. Um, beyond that, it's a, it's a question of comfort too, because like we demonstrated, once things hit an equilibrium, a constant temperature, they still feel differently. And so if it's minus 10 outside and you put your hand on this, this will feel colder in minus 10 than this will. But fundamentally, it's a matter of preference. Some people don't like putting this on top because they find that it slides, but um, I put my uh, closed cell foam on top. And then finally is my sleeping bag that I go to sleep in. Um, this is a pure, uh, down feather sleeping bag with a big loft and like I said it doesn't provide heat it keeps the heat in so when I'm going to bed and I zip this up it keeps the heat in here and but there's still some heat that's leaking out now a couple of nice features about this one um, the sleep the, the zipper I like the fact that it's a center zip instead of a, um, a, a side zip and which, which if you flip it upside down, it turns into a quilt basically, the way it is right now. And it saves a lot of money because, uh, and, and weight, there's only a zipper down the middle instead of having a zipper all the way around. Uh, it has, uh, uh, it's a mummy shape, so your head goes in there. And then I love these shoulder baffles. So once you're in your sleeping bag, you can just undo the Velcro here, which, it just snapped on itself, but you can um, you can you can velcro these baffles together, and what it does is it it traps all that heat ben below your neck. So these are really fantastic. I mean, I don't use the baffles unless it's extremely cold. Um, quick trick before you go to bed. So, like I said. Your body is uh, basically a furnace that's generating heat. So when you go to bed, you actually want to be hot a little bit because um, so exercise, do a little bit of jumping jacks around uh, uh, outside your tent before you go in and finally go in your tent. But another really important trick is eat something fat, like a couple of handful of nuts or something like that before going to bed, not too much. And that will engage your body into generating a little more heat while you're sleeping. So eat a little something just before going to bed and, and also make sure you empty your bladder before going to bed. All right, not entirely necessary, but clear the snow 
And then step one is I put this mylar blanket underneath. It's not a, it's not an emergency blanket. It's a little bit better, a little thicker. Okay, so I got the mylar blanket and my thermos. Now, in the past, I've often, I've all, always put my foam cell underneath my thermos. But after researching a bit and talking to other people and uh, thinking about it. It's smarter to put the foam, uh, the closed cell foam on top of your mattress. My beautiful Outdoor Vitals minus 25 C minus 15 F down sleeping bag and put it on top of my closed cell foam. It's about minus 12, minus 13. It's going to get colder. And uh, I'm in my bag right now, warming up my feet. I'm going to eat some M&Ms. You know, when you eat a little bit of something um, just before going to bed, it gives your body something to digest, which generates a little bit of heat. So, um, but otherwise, uh, it's been two nights in a row now of sleeping in this... Uh, uh, outdoor vitals minus 25 Celsius bag, which is absolutely amazing. So. Probably the most important part of your sleep system is is your sleeping bag and this is outdoor vitals minus 15 F uh, sleeping bag a fold down sleeping bag I've been using it for uh, two months now and it is fantastic I have been in uh, temperatures as low as minus 30 with this bag and I've been comfortable but that said I want to talk about rating so I so I so when a manufacturer like Outdoor Vitals makes a sleeping bag like this they have to get a rating for it and the ratings are, uh, I'm, I'm cheating here, reading on my hand, but there's an international standard called ISO 23537, which standardizes the way sleeping bags are tested and given a rating. And what, and what the manufacturer does is they take their sleeping bag, they send it to a testing company. The testing company follows this, this rating process. Basically what they're doing is they're putting a mannequin in there, a heated mannequin, uh, heated at, the same temperature as a human body and then they're monitoring things like the external temperature of this sleeping bag and how long uh, that you know they how long that mannequin takes to cool off and, and other factors like that and then they provide a rating and and when they provide the rating they give three numbers so they give what's called a comfort rating a uh, lower comfort rating and an emergency or survival rating so they give three numbers and the top number the comfort number is a number that's the term is um, the comfort rating is the temperature that a 25 year old female sleeping on her back would find comfortable I don't know how they came up with that with the standard but that's the standard the lower comfort rating is the temperature at which a person who is accustomed to sleeping in the cold and who might sleep in the fetal position would be comfortable and then the survival rating is actually a, a rating that you wouldn't want to sleep in it's a rating that's provided that says if you just stayed in that sleeping bag for six hours you'll survive so all three numbers are provided now in the case of this sleeping bag the comfort rating is um, minus 5 Fahrenheit the lower comfort rating is minus 15 Fahrenheit and the survival rating is minus 25 now so but when this is advertised the most manufacturers advertise the middle rating the lower comfort rating which I think is a little bogus they sh I prefer that they were advertising the comfort rating and not mislead people I shouldn't say mislead but most people sleep at a comfort level so so in this case if you're if, if you, uh, because it's advertised at minus 5f most people are going to be extremely comfortable using the sleeping bag at minus 5f 
people like me at minus will will have no pro will be extremely comfortable at minus five and will be comfortable at minus 15 the rating that the manufacturer advertises and then I can survive in this in minus 25 in fact I can guarantee you I will do better than survive in this in minus 25 I'll sleep in this in minus 25 I'll just make sure I wear some uh, a good layer of clothing and uh, I might put another sleeping bag inside here, but I could use this sleeping bag well down below minus 25. But I just want to show something quickly. Um, here's here's a here's a, a sleeping bag by North Face, and I wish more companies would do this. But if I go to my North Face, if I can just find it, of course, when you want to find something, you can't find it. So North Face will actually on the sleeping bag will put you know it's listed as a four degrees fahrenheit but they'll say here that the comfort is seven celsius the limit which is the lower comfort and the extreme which is the uh, survival they list them all but uh kudos to outdoor vitals even though they list this as a minus 15 if you go to their website you'll see all three ratings for the sleeping bag it's okay pause. i mean look at the look at the difference here this is a um, let's do an apples to apples. This is a minus 20 degrees Celsius bag. So look at how thick it is. It, it lofts up. You know, look at the foot bag, the, the foot well and everything else. It's, it's, it's quite thick. And this is a summer sleeping bag. It also happens to be down. This is a down sleeping bag, but this is one that's rated for literally you know 25 degrees warmer look at that there's no there's no there's no uh, loft to that but that said you put this inside of that and now I'm good for minus 40 Thanks. yeah so um, absolutely love this sleeping bag I've been out in it for about uh, five nights now so far this year uh, including three nights in a row in the minus 25 range the bag performed flawlessly uh, I love this center zipper. It doesn't stick. It, they, they solved that problem because on the previous version, the zipper was a bit of a, of a, of a problem. Um, the, the neck baffles are amazing. The draw cord. The only thing I didn't like about it is it came with a really cheap stuff sack, but that's okay. I think they sell a cheap stuff sack knowing that most of us have you know, a collection of stuff sacks. So what I did is I put it in a different stuff sack. Um, with compression straps um, the material is solid the construction is fantastic the stitching and it holds its loft so I mean just a fantastic sleeping bag so there you go the science of sleeping in the coal I've talked about this many times in the past but I just wanted to talk about it again it's all about um, insulating yourself from your uh, surroundings if you like this video Hit the like button, give me a subscription, and by all means, give me some comments. And uh, I got some cards throughout the video that uh, link you to previous videos where I talked about sleeping systems in winter and gear loadouts and things like that. So for now, that's Marty up north saying, get off the beaten path, folks.